Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a video for Kelly because she is struggling with quilling and says that it looks like she made it with her feet and a lot of times in the very beginning your stuff does look kind of wonky but it's okay because everybody's got to start somewhere so I'm going to start from the very beginning with tools so let's go with some tools that you need when you start. Now this box came as a kit from Quill Creations and I use a lot of Quill Creations stuff because I like it better than anything else so far. And I have tried other quilling paper. It's thinner. It is longer, but it is thinner. And when you need a heavy duty paper, they have heavy duty paper and I like it much better. I think it holds up much better. All right, so I can't remember what came in the kit because I've had this kit for many years now. Um, as a matter of fact, I have two of them. I don't know why I have the second one. Anyway, um, this is what I keep in mind. I'll go over them slowly. This is my very first... Let me go bring it down a little closer. My very first quilling tool. And in the old days when I first started... I think it was in the late 70s, early 80s. This was the tool that was available. Now there's a little snag on the end of it that, that I guess they assume will stop the paper from sliding off the edge. And I am here to say that doesn't always work. But instead of using a toothpick, you would wet the end of the paper and then kind of pinch it and roll it. And it's monstrous to use. I don't really care for these kind. Although Quill Creations gives you one in every kit and see I have two kits so I have two of these one of them I use for glue can you see <laughs> so um so I think one of these comes in the kit and then you get one of these now hang on the dog it never fails when I start to film somebody wants in somebody wants out somebody has to bark that the wind shifted three miles away <laughs> okay so where I left off let me back you out a little bit because it's there you go. All right, so um, let me talk about the purist and then the other side of the coin, people like me. Purist would uh, like tend to like these kind of tools better because you don't really crimp the paper a whole lot and there's no little folded part in the center. You get that with this tool because there's a slot and when you slip it in, it kind of makes a fold and then you start rolling. So this mostly the purest people who don't like the stuff in the center and for everybody else. <laughs> and I fall into the everybody else category. Frankly, I don't care. Okay, so there we go. Because I think the stuff still looks good either way. Then there is this one which I got from Cuddlebug because I bought one of their uh, die cut kits to make flowers with and this came in the kit. I like this because it's cushy. It has a rubber thing here and it's cushy and it's, it's a little more round, you know, a little thicker than these, but these, I love these anyway. Okay, and then there's this last one and I can't remember how I acquired this one. I think this might be one without the purple rubber on it. If I remember correctly, you can get the rubber off of here and there's some kind of a metal piece or something inside there. I don't suggest you take it off because you need that rubber. You, when you quill, sometimes your hands take a, it takes a toll on your hands, especially if you're not young. Okay, so each one of these, tr uh, up here are different compartments. I just was working on a project I guess a while ago where I was making these and I left them in here. Um, I don't think the kit comes with pens but I went out and bought rust proof dress make, dressmaker pens because I've ruined a lot of pens doing quilling and it's ruined my paper so now I use the rust proof. I don't use anything but rust proof. These eyeballs were just easily stuffed in a baggie and put in here. This is my screw up section where stuff did not, you know, didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. <laughs> Look familiar, Kelly? <laughs> See, I told you, everybody has screw-ups. There you go. So there's my sad little compartment. Then you close it, and you flip it over, and this side 
is completely open. You can put anything you want in here. A lot of people will put their quilling paper in here, but I have too much quilling paper to uh, put inside here. I think I have almost every color of quilling paper there is to have from Quill Creations. And basically in the one quarter inch and the three eighths inch sizes. I think that's the sizes that I have. All right, this comes in the kit also, but I have three of them and I don't know why, but this is Crystal Coat Glaze. I'll explain what this is later. Seriously, you do not need to really use this in the very beginning. You probably want to learn how to do quilling a little bit better before you start squeezing stuff on it other than just basic glue. This is a quilling comb and I will show you later how to use it. I'm not proficient at it, but I get the job done. All right, so there's that. Something else that you're going to need that came actually came in this kit is um, a circle sizer. It, well, gee, let's see, what can I can I do it on here and you can see it? Crud, no. All right, anyway, so this is a circle sizer, and they're labeled zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This uh, ruler is six inches long. If you don't have a ruler and you need to measure a dollar bill or American paper money is six inches long. Alrighty, so here's this. You use this to make the beginnings of a lot of things. This is called a curling coach. Alright, a curling coach is to make it easier for you to make circles or pegs, is what they call them. You take this and you insert it in the hole, and then you twist your paper onto it, which you will see later on in the video. All right, so there's that. And you can get these either in a solid color or the clear plastic, it doesn't matter. And it has rings here for measurements so that you can know, like if you're making 10 of something and you wanna make sure they're consistent, then you make the paper, the end paper, go to the whatever ring, you're trying, however large you're trying to make it. So that's a little bit of a, a cheat helper sort of thing. All right, so there's those. Something that's also extremely important when you do quilling, and that is a cork board. Now, I bought this, like I said, from Quill Creations, but I do have um, a cork board in the drawer, drawer that I bought off of Amazon, and it's kind of thick, too. I didn't use those really skinny pieces because I don't think that's a good one to use. So this comes in this plastic bag. There's a reason why there's a plastic bag over it. I'll explain it. All right, so then inside there you get the concentric circle and then on the back side it has the grid, what do they call it? Husking grid. So there's grids on the back side. And you can flip it around, you know, flip it in the bag and turn the bag either way, whatever you need to use. Not only that, but if you go to Pinterest, you will find other grids that will fit onto. Okay, so now the husband calls. <laughs> I swear, every time I record, somebody's got something to say about it. <laughs> All right, so you can get grids on Pinterest and print them out for whatever project you're working on. And these do fold around. I mean, you might need a bigger piece of... Um, cork board to put these on because these are kind of large but I only wanted let me put it around here yeah that's where I folded it right there I could tell I only wanted some of these circles I didn't need the whole thing so this was perfect and when you do this you leave the plastic bag over it because sometimes if you get overzealous with gluing your stuff might stick and you don't want it to stick to the paper so it's better to put some kind of a zip zippy zippy bag or some kind of a bag over your grid so you don't stick to the paper you're using as your guide and this is well loved <laughs> okay so that's something else you need all right so let's go back to the circle thing many many things start with a circle i showed you the ruler but there's also this. This is a circle guide of some sort. I don't know where I got it, but I've had it a long time. Um, if you're, you have to make multiples of something, and you don't want to keep doing it one at a time, and but, but 
you can put them in here and let them uncurl, roll another one, let it unfurl in there, and then you have these six, and you can use these to hold until the glue dries or whatever you need them for. It's nice that there's six of them. You can put your pens here or whatever you need to hold in here. Maybe other shapes that you're waiting to dry. Whatever. So this is very handy. Now let me tell you the downfall to this. And I'm going to tell you that because you need to know. Alright, so I have zero labeled here because on this ruler it says zero. Zero does not always mean the same for everybody. You see the white? The ruler, I'll push it up higher so it's even, there we go. So all that white is a smaller zero than this one. So if you're going to make multiples of something, make sure you stick with one measurement and use it till the project's done and don't rotate between this one and this one because if you need them to be consistent, which is very important in quilling, uh, going back and forth is going to cause your stuff not to be consistent. So pick one or the other. If I'm doing, if I'm just doing one or two, I will use this. But if I'm doing a whole bunch of things, I will use this. Of course, sometimes that makes what I'm making a little larger than this would make it. But I'm okay with it because for some things, the size does not matter in general terms. Okay, so there's that. All right, then there is the paper. There are a bazillion colors, styles, textures, lengths, companies who sell um, quilling paper. So you can decide what company you want. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it at Michael's. You can buy it at AC Moore and at Hobby Lobby. All of them carry quilling supplies to some degree. They don't always have as a large a selection as if you've gone to directly to the company themselves to buy your supplies. Now my quilling paper is probably five or six years old but it's held up and the color has stayed great. It has not faded. It's not in the sunshine but it has not faded or changed one iota since I bought it and I'm very pleased with the quality of their paper. Okay so I think I show in the next part of the video, and I can't remember where I show this, how to cut your paper open so that you can leave it in the original package. You don't want to take your paper out of the package because you will have a harem scarum mess. And believe me, I know what it's like because I got a drawer over there that looks exactly what, like what I'm talking about. So, um, I've already opened this one, but what you do is you take yourself, where is it? An exacto knife is something something you're comfortable cutting with. Please do not cut yourself. You pinch the paper, then you cut only through the back, you know, the back part here. Just a slit through the back and leave the front intact, no cutting the front. And that way when you need quilling paper, all you have to do is take some of it out like this. And it stays neat in the bag. Now, if you have leftovers that are, are you know, and you, you want to keep your leftovers with the original size, after a while, you start to learn the size of things where you don't have to do this, but it sure is a lot neater if you stick with this. You can slip these little doodahs in here, and then if you need a little piece of it, it's right there in the same bag that tells you the color and the size. And to me, that's really important because I'm a messy girl sometimes, and keeping it corralled is a good thing. All right, so that's this part of the video explaining all the tools that you need. Now for the beginning, there are a bazillion tools that you can buy. Don't buy all of them in the beginning. Just stick to the basics. A quilling tool, a ruler, um, the paper, some straight pins and a cork board, maybe the, you know, the grid too off of Pinterest if you can't afford to buy the grid. A Ziploc bag to put your, grid, your cork board and grid in. Stick to the basics. Don't go gaga over stuff. You will later though. I did. <laughs> maybe you won't, but I sure did. Um, so that's, I think that's it for the first part here. And then I will, see I had to record this 
this is my second time recording this because the first time I did it, I did it on the fly and I had paint on my hands and I'm telling you the whole time, don't do it with dirty hands. <laughs> so I had to re-record the whole thing. Um, I'm going to connect together yesterday's video with this intro on the tools and let it go from there. All right, on to the next part. Okay, so there were, were two things that I forgot to mention, and I want to add them on to the end of this, and that's, this will be the end for the basic tools. You need white glue, or you could use clear, but I use white. Um, buy yourself a fine line applicator. I know that a lot of places will sell you that little teeny bottle has a little flip top on it, but when you lose the top, you end up sticking a pin in there, like, you know, the dressmaker pins I had, and it ended up rusting inside the bottle, and it changed the color of my glue to kind of a lovely um, reddish color. <laughs> and it was ruined, so I ended up having to throw it away. At least with the fine lines, you've got an, a pin built into the, um, into the cap that keeps the nozzle clean for the most part. And if you have... Um, difficulty keeping it clean. Rinse it off with hot water every now and then. Clean them out in between emptying the bottle out and refilling it. This has Elmer's glue in it and the reason it has Elmer's is because it's thin and I don't need you know something really heavy duty like this because a blob on your paper could cause all kinds of problems. So this is not the best thing to use when you need a very very minute amount of glue very small amount of glue to glue the quilling paper because what you're dealing with is not very wide it's not very large all right something else you need a towel to dry your hands and a wet towel to clean your hands so what you can do is get some kind of a little bowl and I only have a paper towel in here because I can't find my terry towel but you wet it with a little uh, water and vinegar and it tends to help with the glue goo on your hands. Wipe your hands off in between when they start looking kind of funky because then that transfers over to your quilled stuff. So get something where you can put it in a bowl and you know wet it when you use it. Or you can buy some kind of um, where is it? Some of these little tiny plastic containers with a lid and put your stuff in there so it stays wet all the time doesn't have to be big you just have to be able to do the tips of your fingers then wipe them off on a dry towel make sure you're completely dry because you'll wet your quilling paper that's where a lot of quillers say their stuff looks dirty or it doesn't look nice is because they've left dried glue that's dark from rubbing and mashing and not having clean hands when they do the quilling and that's where that comes from. That's what makes your quilling dirty is the fact that you've rubbed glue in, you've used too much, you haven't cleaned it up. So that's that. And then the glue. Um, if you cannot afford or don't want to invest in one of these, what you can do is take a piece of saran wrap or some kind of paper, squirt your glue on there, get yourself a toothpick, and use the toothpick as your glue applicator, the end of it. I know that when I started the video, I showed, I think I showed this one right here. This one's very crusty because this is what I use. And boy, it's really on here, but good. I need to clean it off. Um, I use this to dot my paper with glue when it's a little bit bigger surface and I need to, you know, smooth it out. This is great for putting it on there and then kind of smoothing the glue out. But be sure you wash it off. Otherwise, look at this. You're going to end up pulling it right out of the thing. Look at that. There you go. This is painted wood, I think. And then it slides back in there. If you ever want to know what's inside their stuff, that's it right there. But it's got a good suction on it, so it's kind of hard to get it off. All right, so there's that. So there's the glue talk. <laughs> All right, so this is it. Oh, yeah. You might need scissors, although I don't use them very often in quilling. So just keep them handy just in case. I doubt you will use them, but, you know, never hurts to have them close to where you are. All right, so that's it for the basic tools that you need for quilling. The next part I'm going to show is 
how to get started on a flower. And so I think that's what Kelly was working on. She got a kit. I didn't see the kit, but I'm just going to show how to do basic, the basic flower that looks like this. Where's the one that I did in yesterday's video? Here it is. This one does not have the magnet on the back. This has got a magnet. So there's basically the same version of a flower. One's a little smaller than the other because I used the um, eighth of an inch paper and this is a quarter of an inch. You can see the difference in the photo, uh, in the photo, in the video here. So there's that. And I have more examples. You can go crazy making little flowers that are magnets. You can go nuts. All right, so that's the beginning. So stay tuned for part two video on how to get started. Bye.